In this episode, I spoke with Justin Simon about content marketing, repurposing, and distribution strategy. Justin is one of the world's best minds in terms of content distribution and is uniquely qualified to talk to us about all things that you should do to distribute and create great content in an effective way that drives business results. So let's dive right into the episode. Let's focus today around around content distribution and start with the negative side of kind of what's usual, what's typical with companies. Mm. Um, so when you're looking at content marketing's current state of affairs and what companies are usually doing, what's wrong with the way that things are kind of commonly done right now in content? I think with distribution, the biggest downfall is lack of priority or, or even like consideration of it. So much of distribution with current companies is a complete and utter afterthought to where uh, it, it's literally not even top of mind. Like the people I talk to, the companies I consult with, the um, the different content marketers that I work with, it's it's a almost a the more that I'm getting into it, I'm realizing it's almost a orga organizational shift in mindset around content. So for years, content was around production and creation. And us as content marketers or creators got really like judged or like assessed as good or bad based on the amount of content we ended up creating. So like, oh, Justin, how, how much, how many, what's your content calendar look like this month? Like not per... I mean, sometimes performance based, but like, and even that was very much like, how many keywords is this ranking for? How many sessions did this, you know, bring in, which is very SEO focused, which is just one distribution channel. And the world is completely changed now to where it's not this sort of, I'm going to, I mean, I don't, I barely even Google things anymore. It's very strange, like how that works. Or if I do, I'm definitely not like, building brand affinity with those companies. I'm just trying to get an answer. Oftentimes Google's giving me the answer up top. I'm literally not even, you know, featured snippets. And so I'm literally not even clicking on their website, zero click content, all that type of stuff. And so I think it's a, just a complete and utter shift in how companies think about content marketing, how they think about content distribution, how they think about getting their content in front of their audience and what that looks like. And it's just a, it's a really hard shift to make because it means a lot of fundamental things have to change. Well, let's level set a little bit too with kind of like your definition of content distribution. Cause I think Gary V's made content repurposing a little bit more popular now where people understand what repurposing is, but what's the difference between repurposing and, and actual distribution and how would you define it? Yeah, I think distribution distribution doesn't have to in itself be a repurposed piece of content. You could there are different distribution channels. So think about a everything from the more traditional like I'm going like to make sure this ranks in Google to an email newsletter or an email list or social media, but it's also things like you providing an answer based on a piece of content that you created in a uh, fo forum that you're in or in a community that you're in. It's just like getting that information out there, creating short form content on YouTube shorts, creating long, it's, it's really, to me, it's getting, it's less about like repurposing to me feels very much like getting um, one piece of content out and cutting it up in a bunch of different ways. That's kind of like how I talk about like micro repurposing and then macro repurposing is more so along this idea of like distribution. And that's like getting your ideas out there in the marketplace and getting in front of your audience where you're at. And it's like, it's kind of hard to give like a clear definition. Cause I think there's, there's channels, there's formats, there's all of those things that kind of go into distribution and it's different for every single company, but finding those one or two spots where your audience hangs out those two, one or two channels, and then creating content for those channels where your audience is hanging out. I mean, that's distribution at its like most simplest form. Is is there a certain like split you would say content marketing should be this amount of writing, this amount of editing, this amount of distribution? Like, do you have a, a kind of a framework in mind for that? Uh, I mean, I always like I always like to say the pendulum should be like 
I think in a prime pendulum, like let's think like 50, 50 would be like an okay split of like, we're going to spend half of our time creating content and half of our time trying to either repurpose or make, you know, repurpose and make sure that is getting out on the channels where we want them to get, to get out. I think honestly though, as I have started working inside more companies and even looking back at some of the past companies that I worked at when you start to audit the content that's getting created, it's, it's, it's not even that good. A lot of the time, sometimes it is, but even if it's really, really good content, there isn't enough, there aren't enough lanes in the distribution at, at, at any given company to even get that out in front of their audience over time. Right? So if you have a webinar, a blog, two blog posts, a podcast and an event all happening within a, a week or two of each you know, how, how much can you flood your distribution channels with those particular things? And so for me, it's actually coming down to like, I would rather create one or two really, really amazing things that the audience is like kind of chomping at the bit for, like we all know those companies or those creators, et cetera, that maybe aren't creating all the time consistently, but man, when they put something out, we're like, oh yes, like it's a new one. Like that's the feeling we should have with our content. And oftentimes it's just like, yeah, we, we got to hit publish. We got to hit publish. We got our, our Wednesday, our Wednesday post got to go out. Yeah. I've, I've, I've thought about this recently actually, because with AI now to your point about not Googling things like there's just, it seems like SEO and content's in a different spot now. And the, the crux of what's made content tough is like people have optimized so much around doing more higher quantity and needed to probably focus more on quality, like you're saying. On the back end of this, in, in terms of distribution itself, though, do you see any risk of like people become better at understanding content distribution? So they just try to go for quantity in that as well, instead of quality of distribution? Yeah, absolutely. And I think there's, uh, yeah, I mean, there, there are people out there who, who say that, right? Like it's a volume game. Um, and, and whether it's, you know, shorts or Google, I mean, the same problems exist of like, well, I'm just going to flood the audience with as much, you know, as much content as I can. If I get X results with X content, I'll, I'll scale it up. I think, you know, Gary V would be a great example of that, right? Like the massive amounts of, of content that are, somebody like Alex Ramosi, like these just tons of content that are getting created and pumped out on any given, uh, any given day. But. For most companies, we don't have a team of people working on that on that content. We don't have a team of people who are dedicated to getting that out there. So I think, and I think in the long run, like, isn't the goal to to have those people know, like, and trust you? And so the content can't just be junk. Like it can't it can't just be aver like a bunch of average content isn't actually going to help your cause. Does, I mean, do you agree with that? Yeah, no, I agree. And, and as you're talking, I'm I'm thinking through this concept of like personal brand versus corporate brand and how hard it is to grow a corporate brand. If you apply it to, to this situation for like Gary Vee or Hormozy, people have built a personal connection and affinity with those people. If you were trying to recommend like, how does a company do that so that they can build a distribution engine that's actually building affinity on top of it? Like how much more difficult is that for a corporate entity and how would you recommend that they go about it? extremely difficult and i think it does come back to personal brands now comes back to like that founder brand mentality those people i mean we connect with people people connect with people especially in a social environment i do not connect with the brand icon on your company twitter page um oftentimes i mean i don't even follow that i don't even follow and engage with that many companies on social media because like what do i what do i need support maybe, you know, like, so it's very, very difficult. And I think overall, that's where the landscape is shifting to toward more of these companies doing things like influencer marketing, connecting with people. So again, maybe it's that founder brand, that really core thing, or tapping into p individuals and creators who are in that same niche and have that same audience that you can sort of like leverage their affinity with your brand, right? Like just the classic sort of influencer marketing. G taking a step back here, going back to kind of first principles of what you believe with content distribution, you really hammer home this idea of distribution first and the rest comes after that. What does that flip look like? Like explain how you think about it, how you actually teach this to people and what it, what it means. Yeah. Distribution first is all about 
setting distribution as a priority. So oftentimes people, like I mentioned at the very beginning, the, the main problem is people hit publish and move on. They're just creating content for, I mean, even if it's not creating content for the sake of creating content, they're creating the content and then moving on to the next thing and creating more content. Distribution first in the frameworks that I teach, it's all about understanding your, you know, your, your core content marketing principles, story, themes, what you want to talk about, all of that. And, but by bringing distribution first in front of it and understanding what channels do we even want to be on, you know, what, what are our one or two channels that we're really focusing on for a lot of companies that I work with in the B2B space, it's LinkedIn and it's email. And it's like, okay, cool. Like LinkedIn, you can get by with one post a day. That's really, really good. Like the algorithm is going to kind of tease that out and take that. And so when you start to think about that, if you do every, every single weekday, on LinkedIn, that's only 25 posts a month, you know, or 20 posts a month, roughly. And so you don't need that much. That's not that much content when you think about how much emphasis is already putting, or some of these companies have, you know, hundreds of thousands of blogs. And so it's just reverse engineering that back to say, okay, we wait a second. Why are we creating four blog posts a month then if 10% of them are ranking on Google and we're not distributing. Like as soon as you do that audit on your content and look at like what's getting created and then audit that compared to what's getting distributed, it's very, very clear that most companies are creating too much content. And so that's where the distribution first framework comes in is it's really pulling that and like kind of getting your head out of the sand a little bit to, to see what's actually happening. Uh, I kind of talk about it in some ways, like I think about it sort of like budgeting, like you can just kind of like spend money pretty easily, right? Like if you don't have an idea, like it, it'll, it, it'll just spend it, you'll get it and you'll spend it. It takes intentionality to like sit down and like understand where that money's going and then have a plan to actually spend that money, save that money, et cetera, et cetera, to be able to know what's happening. And so I think it, it's very similar with uh, content folks. Yeah, I've, I've seen this companies I've worked with. Um, one of the core reasons that distribution doesn't happen is not because they don't know that they should be doing it. It's more like we, we have way too much stuff. I have no idea how we're even going to take a first step and what that looks like. Um, when, when you're thinking through organizationally, how do you keep it all in a spot? When you really start breaking down, here's everything that already exists. Here's how we're going to turn it into stuff that's usable. How do you organize it? What tools do you use? What systems do you use to keep yourself you know, in touch there with everything that's going on? Yeah, I think it's for every company is different. So, and I have the benefit now of like working in different organizations. And so, you know, a, a small company with maybe one content person and, you know, a CMO or something like there's, there's a little bit more freedom and flexibility to build that plan out faster and to understand and iterate, get into a larger company with multiple teams creating, you know, product marketing is creating product content customer service is creating or, you know, education type tutorial content, marketing is creating sort of their generalized marketing content. And so coming up with that cohesive plan is a little bit more difficult, but as far as like frameworks for me, it all, like I said, it all starts with the channel. So like understanding what channels you want to, you want to hit and then frequency, how often are you going to build that out? I actually have a lot of this stuff built out and, and templatized, but it's like just a basic calendar of like, just laying that out, right? Like, oh. We want to be on LinkedIn every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Awesome. So let's write that down. We want to talk about these four themes. Okay. Awesome. Let's spread those four themes out across the month. So we're hitting each one of those. All right. Now let's do a quick audit. What content do we have existing that fits these four themes that we already decided we want to talk about? All right. This one, this one, this one, this one. That's when you can start repurposing and start distributing that content, or you can start to understand. The other interesting thing is like I've audited folks, content libraries, content calendars, LinkedIn posts, and they've said, these are the things that are most important to us to get our message out. And then you audit their, their content and they don't talk about any of them. <laughs> it's like, oh, you I thought you said like this theme was really, really important to you guys. Like I audited your content for the last three months and you've talked about it once. You had one blog post and you never talked about it on, on, on LinkedIn or your email. So it's, it's, it's really just kind of building out that plan and reverse engineering what, you know, what channels, what frequencies, what themes, and then from there deciding like, 
do we have existing content that we can map toward those things and repurpose or what gaps exist that we have to create new content from and that kind of guides you know what needs to get created versus the sort of like we think we should create this thing in the next quarter uh if if you don't have anything for this next one let me know uh if you're not an ai guy but i'm curious <laughs> Uh, if there are any instances in your workflow where AI is patching some stuff up or where you're using it to try to get more leverage, like, is there anything it's actually doing well for you right now? Yes. So, uh, I've been testing out a bunch of different, a bunch of different tools. Uh, I mean, chat GPT is, is one of them. A lot of that is one of the ways I'm using it. And again, this might be m more, um, more sp specific to some of the repurposing work, but like just understanding, like those themes and existing content, you can go into like a chat GPT and say, all right, um, I am trying to create uh, more content on this theme. Obviously there, there's better prompts than this. I'm creating it on this theme. And here is a existing, you know, five existing themes that we have on this. What are some other topics that we can create content around for this? And then you can even go further and say, all right, what are some interesting uh, ways to, uh, you know, repurpose that content. I like to even get like, just give me 10 YouTube title ideas, you know, cause then I can get my brain thinking and it's like, oh, okay, that's an idea for maybe a LinkedIn post. Like I'm not going to create the YouTube video, but I'm going to try to create some of that content where I can get validation. Cause I think that's the other thing too, with the distribution side is I like to use social, not just to go top down, but go bottom up and say, all right, let's create some content ahead of this idea to start getting validation to even understand if our audience cares about it. Um, anyway, that's a, that's a side tangent. Another one that I'm using, I use this for my podcast. Actually, there's a couple tools, but one of them I've been playing with right now is called cast magic. And I like cast magic because it also has a chat feature built into it. So a lot of them kind of like you get what you get, like these are our set, you know, outputs that you get for a podcast, whereas chat magic or uh, cast magic has a chat feature, which, allows me to quickly go in and get some more things. So like if I have a podcast episode, for instance, I can go in and say, all right, what are the main problems that are in this episode? What are the main things that, you know, a content marketer would care about? And it can pull those out. And I'm like, oh, okay, perfect. That's a, that's a good thing to like build into this week's newsletter. Flip side. What, what have you tried with AI? That's like, wow, this is not work at all. I cannot trust this at any point in my workflow. Oh man. I've tried so many stinking tools. I couldn't even think of, I'm trying to think of like a really, honestly, it's less about like sometimes the output and like the workflow. Like if the workflow of an AI tool is so difficult that I just can't get into the flow of like using it, I, I don't think that's, um, that's actually helpful. And then I, I would say the other thing is early on, especially like hoping the AI tool would just do it all for me, right? Like it's not going to, it's not going to write the thing for you. Um, and you really have to train those things up. And so I think being able to, to get better with the tools and be able to do that, but I don't know if I could think of even one, like off the top of my head that I've used, that's like, oh, it's this garbage, but. Uh, if wrapping it up in a, in a nice bow, when you look at content marketing as a whole content marketing plus distribution, the whole thing, what are you, what are some predictions or hot takes you might have about what the future five years looks like. in five years, what content marketing looks like. I think content marketing is going to shift more toward, uh, a world where people who know how to do distribution. So know how to build email newsletters, know how to, uh, build social followings, know how to create YouTube content, short content, people who know how to do that are the people who are going to lead content marketing. And so it's going to move away from like this sort of on site and out approach. And it's going to move, I think content marketing is going to move toward a, uh, really a distributed platform first type environment where you're then trying to pull people back into your thing. And I think the clearest example of this is a lot of content, like, there's a gap in, in content marketers. Most of them started as writers, writing blogs, got trained on how to do SEO. And that's kind of like the lane they're in. And maybe they got promoted, but like their whole engines are built around sort of 
writing and, and blog writing in particular. And so I think those, those sort of folks who don't understand how to also write for Twitter, write for LinkedIn, reformat those things into a short script, build a podcast out of those same ideas. Like you have to be multifaceted as a content marketer and be able to do that. And I think it's only going to get either however your side of that coin better or worse, depending on how you can upskill. I, I agree. My my last one here, and then, then we'll let you go. When you look at your, your tool belt of the tools that you use on a regular basis, specifically MarTech, what are the tools that you couldn't live without? Ooh, that's a good one. So definitely different for me now that I'm running my own thing. Um, I think traditionally it might be more of those sort of like, I guess even, even so now like, um, uh, something like a SEMrush to like kind of get those things, Google analytics, um, search console, those type of things, typical content marketing stuff. But I think for me now, honestly, it's like <laughs> my, uh, I use captivate to host my podcast. I use LinkedIn to distribute content. I use SendFox for my email service and I use uh, Riverside to record the podcast. Like though, like the core parts of my engine are a podcast that gets cut up into a newsletter that gets cut up into social content and then that all gets reversed out. And so like, if I'm talking about like how I create, like I don't run paid ads. I don't, uh, I don't do that sort of traditional stuff. I don't write blog posts. So I don't really even have like a full on like big old website that I have to manage and stuff like that. So really it's like those three core components. And then, uh, you know, a mix mash of like cast magic, chat GPT, et cetera, to be able to really, um, really get, get more out of the content quickly. 